Now, for those of you playing Lies of P, you've probably noticed that there are thousands of different possibilities to assemble your weapons in the game, giving you high amounts of DPS, extremely long range attacks, and just outright ridiculous damage outputs. So today, we're going to be looking at the top five, in my opinion, of all of those combinations that you can make, and most definitely, these are going to be weapons that will carry you through the game, especially the notoriously hard new game plus. So, if you're excited, make sure you hit that like button down below and if you're new around here and you enjoy Lies of P, Elden Ring, all the Soulsborne sort of content on the platform, make sure that you're subscribed because we're doing all of that here. It's free and that way you'll stay up to date with all of the latest content that is released on this channel. But with all that said, let's kick things off at the number 5 spot. And in the 5th spot we're going to have the head of the Salamander Dagger Blade fused with the Bramble Curve Sword Handle. When we fuse these two together, you've got access to the two Fable Arts Ignite and Furious Slash and when you combine these two, they can make for quite a deadly combination. As you're seeing right now, the Furious Slash Fable Art is relentless and does around about 2,500 damage before igniting the enemies to then do continuous fire damage. The only sort of like downside with this weapon is the fact that it's only really good in like the later stages of the game. Whereas a fire-based weapon, it is great against the carcass enemies that you find as they're extremely weak to fire and get ignited after just two hits with this weapon, even without you using the Fable Art, but against Puppets and Stalkers it does struggle a little bit and the Furious Slash Fable Art can be interrupted fairly easily. You need to get the first three hits off to stagger your enemy first of all, so if you mistime it or use it in the wrong area you could get staggered by your enemies, especially if you've got multiple enemies around you. So it does take a little bit of getting used to as well, but once you do get used to it, the amount of damage that you can do with this thing is monumental. But where this weapon is essentially not so great against half of the enemies that there are in the game as it mainly shines only against the carcass enemies I feel that the number five spot is a perfect place to put this and kick off this amazing list but uh, obviously with all that said let's jump straight into the number four spot. We've got the combination of the bone cutting saw blade as well as the coil Molnir handle because essentially what you get when you slap these two things together is one of the longest ranged melee weapons that I have ever seen in any game whatsoever. Of course, the gimmick with this is the fact that you can defeat enemies before they even get close to you, allowing you to pretty much clear any area without being touched whatsoever, so keeping your health potions nice and safe in your belt. But not only that, it does do quite a high amount of damage as well. So you're not just prodding your enemies with a blunt stick, you are actually dealing quite a substantial amount of damage with this weapon. The reason why this weapon doesn't find itself any higher in the list is just because unfortunately it doesn't do quite as much damage with the attacking fable art compared to the others on this list. Also it has a similar sort of problem with the previous weapon where if you're using that link chop fable art you sort of do the first attack leaving you vulnerable before then pressing the Y button again to actually unleash that heavy hitting final sweep meaning that you can get interrupted again whilst using this weapon. Of course if you time it perfectly and manage to get the hit off then you're going to be dealing around about three to four thousand damage against most enemies but just where you essentially have to use the Fable Art twice. It does take about five or six seconds to actually get the final hit off, obviously leaving quite a large time frame, especially if you're up against a boss, where they can hit you and interrupt you. But the other side of it as well is it's perfect for defense because with the Molnir's handle you get the absolute defense Fable Art, which increases your window for a perfect guard. So if you are struggling with getting past like a certain mini boss or just a regular boss, this can be very useful to hit them at range and obviously try and attack them without them hitting you but also giving you the option to do a perfect guard at any given time with the fable art hopefully making the fight a little bit easier as you can break their stances with it. So for me if you are struggling with the game I would definitely highly recommend that you get the bone cutting saw blade and that way you'll be able to keep your distance deal a high amount of damage and also have a great protective fable art at the same time. But obviously just to ramp up the juice and get things even more interesting the top three weapons that I'm about to discuss with you are three of the highest damage dealing weapons in the entire game. And we're going to be kicking off this insane top three with a combination of the live puppets axe blade 
along with the puppet's saber handle. Essentially, with these two weapons combined, again, you've got a brilliant combination of fable arts, which can also mix in with just the generic attacks you can use with the weapon itself. Because with the handle, we've got the concentrate fable art, which boosts your attack damage for 15 seconds after using it. And then the fable art with the weapon, I must admit, isn't the absolute best in the entire world, but it is a heavy hitting slash attack, which can be comboed in after, say, a heavy attack with this weapon, dealing another sort of 15 to 2,000 damage on top of what you already did. So this weapon combination is a bit more ideal for free flowing combat where you're going to be mixing in all the different attacks that you can do whether it be a light attack or heavy attack to break the enemy stance and then every so often once you accumulate two of your fable art bars you can just again hit them with the heavier slash to deal an extra bonus damage if you will while still focusing on the main attacks with the weapon. Essentially with the concentrate fable active and comboing a charged heavy attack with the killer attack fable art you'll be doing around about four four and a half thousand damage each time. It's a lot quicker to get this off and can obviously be recharged multiple times normally in each boss fight so there's going to be multiple opportunities where you can use that combination but even if you don't want to use that combination just the weapon itself is really really good at breaking stances allowing for a lot of fatal attacks again dealing lots and lots and lots of damage. So essentially if you want to compare this one with the previous weapon what we're losing with the reach of this weapon because obviously it's a lot smaller we're making out for in damage potential. I had a lot of fun using this whilst recording it for this particular video and it's just also a great weapon just to have on you to traverse through different areas because it's making use of like the quicker attacks meaning that you can pretty much just stun lock any regular enemy that you come across making it 10 times easier to get to wherever you need to get to. But that's all well and good of course but there's two weapons that I consider to be better or weapon combinations sorry that I determined to be better than this. And I'm not gonna lie it does change as to who's at the top spot for me whenever I pretty much use either one of these weapons but sitting down now subjectively right this second at the number two spot will have to be the combination of the coil Molnir head so Thor's hammer mixed with the Krat police baton. Now a bit of a spoiler alert but the police baton handle does feature in both of these weapons that I'm going to talk about because for me the fable art that comes with the police baton handle strike chance is the best sort of stat boosting fable art that you can get on any handle in the entire game because what that does is it significantly increases the damage output with your next hit. If you want to chain that in with the Fable Art for the weapon itself, in this case being Molnir and the Thunder Strike ability, you're going to be doing upwards of 5,000 damage plus with just that one attack. The damage output with this is just ridiculous, as of course you call upon the powers of the sky to infuse your weapon with that electric blitz ability, hammering that down onto your enemies, dealing that catastrophic damage. This weapon literally has the ability to defeat certain bosses in two or three attacks, which is just obviously Obviously something that cannot be missed and go under the radar in this type of game and hopefully that's a good enough reason as to why I'm always debating whether this should be the number one weapon in the entire game and one thing I actually forgot to mention as well when you do use the thunder strike ability the weapon is then infused with electric blitz for about 10 seconds again allowing you to affect your enemies with electric blitz if they weren't already and you can just keep rinse and repeating that same process which is why this weapon is fantastic and I know I mentioned a moment ago that I'm always sort of debating whether that should be number one and whether or not the upcoming weapon should be number two but this weapon does find itself at number two mainly down just to raw damage output because at number one essentially all we're doing is removing Molnir from the police baton and adding on the big pipe wrench and I'm gonna be honest and probably keep this very very short for you guys it is purely just down to damage output the fable art with this weapon is very similar in the fact that you can obviously combine the two fable arts to increase your damage output with the next attack but the wrench heads fable art patient smash allows you to also charge up that attack unleashing an ungodly amount of damage when you finally swing for them after charging it up to three times in the gameplay that you're seeing again being new game plus this pipe wrench is not even fully upgraded it's actually only plus six 
and it's doing similar if not more damage than what Molnir was doing. The other benefit of also using this particular Fable Art instead of Molnir's is that it has a little bit more range. With Molnir you need to more or less be right on top of the enemy before using it otherwise you're just going to miss and there's quite a high chance of that happening. However with the pipe wrench when you charge it up your character then runs towards the enemy obviously being locked on and will hit near enough every time. So pretty much the only problem that we had with Molnir is now being eliminated with the pipe wrench and it does additional damage and if you wanted to keep the electric blitz effect on the weapon you can just do that with the grindstone anyway. So like I say when I sat down and obviously thought about it objectively as much as it's nice and cool to mimic Thor and you know pretend that you're him in the game realistically this weapon is miles above. It was just so much fun to use and again similarly you can take out most bosses in two or three hits with this thing. You genuinely become some sort of like overpowered god ready to fix anyone's leak at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, like I say, I'm just going to keep that short and sweet because they are literally the only two differences between those two weapons and they are the best two in the entire game, at least for me. But if you haven't used any of the weapons that we featured today, obviously I do advise that you go and give them a try. They are extremely useful, they obviously have their pros and their cons, but the beauty of this game is making use of that weapon assembly. If you like a particular fable art with a certain weapon, you can then chuck that and combine that with your favourite fable art from a handle, from a different weapon, and that's obviously what allows allows us to make tremendous weapons like the ones you're seeing here. But yeah, that is essentially my list. If you feel that something else needs to be on here, by all means let me know in the comments down below. It'll be very interesting to hear what you guys have to say. You never know, we may make another video with five other weapons that are just as good because there are hundreds of different possibilities. So I'll be surprised if I don't have any comments disagreeing with this list. I'm having an absolute blast playing Liza P and I've got a lot more content coming up for you guys. So if you want more top fives like this, whether it be about the best amulets and sort of like build that you can make in the game as well as the top five special weapons in the entire game as well obviously let me know that you want to see that by hitting that like button down below but if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe and that way you'll know exactly when those pieces of content come out but um other than that i think that's everything i need to say guys so thank you once again for watching i hope you're having an amazing day but i guess for now i'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make bye bye